Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter fucking Joseph here. For video number three. That's three. I don't know why my hands does that, but three. But anyway, video number three. Right here. On the Peter fucking Joseph YouTube wrestling channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Right now. Right now. To this very channel and my other channels, which are down below in the description box. And follow me on social media if you dare. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And share the video all over the internet. And most importantly, tap and slap that bell. And turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. And if you do, well, that's too bad for you. And that rhymes. But anyway. If you missed it, you missed it. I can't help you with that. You lose! And that's pretty much it. So like, share, subscribe. You can leave a comment if you wish. But if it's a... If it was a stupid comment, you're going to get deleted and you're going to get blocked. And if you don't like that, then cry me a river. Get over it. Grow up. Move on. And that's pretty much it. And if this is your first time watching, well, welcome to the party, pal. We hope you enjoy the ride. And if not, you can uh, get out of here and go fuck yourself. Simple, simple as that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Video number three. On your late Wednesday night, December the 6th, 2023. If you're watching this tomorrow, it'll be December the 7th, 2023. Yes, we're still counting down those days to Christmas and the New Year. And everything else. So, enjoy it. Because pretty soon it's going to be Christmas in about two weeks from now. And that's pretty much it. So, check out my other videos that I did earlier today, down below in the description box, I did a uh, special music-related video, uh, talking about my top 10 songs that legit make me legit cry, or just top 10 songs that make me legit cry, whatever you want to call it, but, so, wanted a little, wanted to uh, kind of branch out a little bit with my Metal Guy channel and talk about some music, I mean, it's a Metal Guy channel. Got to talk about the metal and talk about the music. So, so decided to do that. I got some more coming, coming maybe, uh, maybe in the next few weeks. You know, I would do a top 10 Christmas songs edition, but eh, maybe we will, maybe we, I won't. I don't know yet. Not, not, not a lot of good Christmas songs, unless you're in a, the metal realm, but top 10 heavy metal slash pop. Because there is one pop song that I think we all know and love. I'm a certain band. I think we all know. But, yeah, I'll probably be doing that maybe on Christmas Day. I, I don't know yet, but we'll see what happens with that. And then later on, going into 2024, I'll do a little bit more top 10 uh, editions of uh, bands and stuff like that. Songs. Song-related stuff and uh, maybe some metal news and all that other good shit. On the Metal God channel and on my uh, well on that channel and then my pretty much all my other channels will pretty much be status quo, re, uh, wrestling reviews, news, maybe some rants here and there. We don't know yet about that, but it is uh, pretty much what it is. It's not going to be you know the rants are not going to be drama based and it's just going to be what I feel like ranting about uh, in the world of current events, really sports, music. And, uh, politics, whatever, whatever, but drama base is pretty much out the window now, uh, I fin I fin I did my last one the other, uh, last night, so, it's, it's pretty much over for drama rants, so I'm gonna just take my, my take my rant channel, it's still very legendary, and you know it, and just, just, uh, just kind of, not put it on the back burner per se, but just change it around a little bit. Because, uh, you know, I just feel like, feel like changing it up a little bit in 2024. Not the same old shite, you know. But the, the, the wrestling reviews will pretty much, pretty much be, be the same. Um, that's, that's pretty much it as we go into 2024 and beyond. So, get ready for that. And, uh, don't hit, don't forget to hit that bell. Because if you miss anything the rest of this year... 
you have pretty much SOL, and you know what that means. And uh, that's that's that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so watch the two videos on on um down below in the description box. Uh, my my uh, music video and what I did earlier. It was a couple of hours ago that we found out if you're a Yankee fan, you're like going. It's like Christmas, you know, came early for you. Juan Soto is now has now been traded to the yet to the Skankies. Uh, for Michael King and a whole bu and a whole bunch of like six thousand prospects. Yeah, so Soto's probably gonna be the DA. Uh, well, he might be the right fielder, and then Stanton. You know, I don't know why Stanton's still on the team, but yeah, he's got a, like a lifetime contract. Yeah, and a lifetime on the injury list. Oh, I mean, I mean, if Soto, if Soto, Stanton, and Judgey Wudgey go on the disabled list next year, I am gonna laugh my ass off. I will laugh my ass off because, you know, Hal Steinbrenner and Cash Cashman, a douchebag. You know, basically getting an overpriced bum like Soto, because that's what he is, a bum. Overpriced. He's an overpaid piece of shit like Stanton is, like Judgy Wudgy is. And he also gets hurt, too. So, good luck with that, Yankee fans. Good luck. I mean, if you want to really buy uh, tainted title number twenty-eight, there you go. You, you have you have you have a one-year rental because you're not gonna get. I, I doubt. I mean, I doubt that. Come next off-season, by this time next year, Monsoto will be a free agent, and you you know he he'll want a lot of money. I mean, Uncle Stevie couldn't even get him because all the prospects he. <laughs> didn't want to really give up, but now he has some pieces. All the some pieces. I mean, he got all these, all these rentals basically. Like they got Mike Tomlin. Um, I think for the he pitched for the Braves. I think. Yeah, that's great. You know, for the bullpen per se. But still, it's like, who is this guy? Like all these other people that the Mets are getting. Like, who are these people? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do it at Jerry Seinfeld. Who are these people? I mean, who are these guys? And half of them won't even make the team. So why get them? Oh, we're just going to find them to swing training. Half of them probably won't make it. Uh, waste, wasting money. Like Severino, one year. What, how much we get them for? One year, $13 million. Pfft. Basically a cup of coffee for a bum that really was good. And now he stinks. He stunk really bad on the Yankees. Imagine how he stinks on the Mets. <laughs> God. Um, but it is what it is. Um, but, you know, Mr. Stevie Cohen had met with uh, possibly the newest ace of the Mets. That's Mr. Yamamoto. Yoshinibu, whatever. The f Yoshinibu, nor Yoshinori Yamamoto, I think his name is. Bless you. <laughs> but I think that's so, uh, Who knows if uh, he comes to the Mets, but... And then they have another Japanese pitcher I think they want to get too. I forgot. I think his name is Igawa. I don't know his name. But get somebody at least. Not these rentals that pff, are garbage. Besides Tomlin, I'm okay with it, but still. I mean, if we could get Eric Fetty, that would be nice. That would be really, really nice. So, I mean, the Winnemings are kind of, kind of, Continuing, I think they finish up this weekend. And uh, pretty much the winners right now is the Yankees because they got Juan Soto. Otani's still on the board, technically. Don't know where he's going, whether it's going to be Toronto or the Braves. I hope he goes to Toronto, personally, as a Met fan. And who knows what the Yankees have done? I mean, they got Verdugo from, from uh, Boston. Boston. Now they got now they got pretty much their, their star... The star is Juan Soto, and then, you know, that lineup is going to be dangerous. But yeah, it was dangerous last year. What happened? Ugh! Underachieving high... Oh, not, sorry, should take that back. Overachieving, overpaid bums. Because that's what the Yankees get. Overpaid bums. A-Rod, anyone? 
Stanton? Anyone? Judgy Wudgy? Anyone? You can tell how bad I hate the Yankees. How bad I hate them. And um, that's, that's that. But we'll see what happens when we get there. But check out the videos down below in the description box. Do it now! Wince win. Who's Wince win? I guess you haven't played Discworld on PlayStation 1. Or, uh, or Discworld 2. Golden Banana. I love that game. That game is fun. That game is fun. It, it feels like an old school... I don't know what I can compare it to, but... But it's a fun game. The first two of... Uh, well, the, there's only two, as far as I know. But the first one is, is freaking insane. Throw a tomato! First one is funny. The second one is just ridiculous. Which is good. It's good fun. It's not like Final Fantasy or anything like that, but... You know, it's a good little strategy game. Not, not that... Eh, not that long, but... Unlike Final Fantasy XII, that game is long. 15 is long too, 16 as well. But, yeah, when Final Fantasy Rebirth comes out, I think it's, well, I think it's called Rebirth. The next Final Fantasy VII remake part, because it's going to be three parts, because of three discs. How fitting. So that, and the third one ain't coming out until like 2026 at least. Who knows? But the, the next part is coming out in 2024 for the PS5. Really? Really, Squaresoft? Come on. You made the first one for PS4. Great. Then they had that uh, the little part with Yuffie in it. That was PS4. And now they're making the second, the second actual part with more stuff in it, probably. You're going to put it on PS5? Come on. Come on. You know, Resident e the new Resident, e Resident Evil remakes are on PS5 now. But the, the new Resident Evil, yeah. The new Resident Evil remakes are going to be out on PS5 now. Resident Evil 4 is already out. Uh, they're talking about Resident Evil 5 possibly being remade. And then Resident Evil Co. Veronica X being remade. That's good. How about we make, how about, not even remake it, redo Resident Evil 6. Because that... Fucking game sucks. I mean, it does. It is so bad. And then they made go. I mean, they made up for it with Resident Evil uh, Seven, and then Resident Evil Eight was Village. They talk maybe they talk about Resident Evil Nine. With I don't even know if Chris Redfield is gonna be in it. If you follow Resident Evil Eight, I mean he was. He was in the game, you play, play him near the end of the fucking game. And then, I think you play, I think, well, no, is he? I think in the downloadable content, you, you don't, you play him a little bit, but the, pretty much the end of Resident Evil Village, you do play as him. And you get a lot of fucking, uh, ammo. It's insane. At the start, when, I, when you first play as Chris Redfield, it is insane how much ammo he has. That game's hard, but, I mean, when you get to that, the, the final part, it is insane. You ha you need a lot of ammo. And that's, you know, you find a lot of ammo, but it's good, which is good. But the boss fights are... Ugh. Not even with with um, Ethan, you know. And then you, when you get to Chris, you're like, oh, Jesus, I'm a, how bad is it going to be now? Oh, wait till the final boss. And and we, it then turns into an evil boss. And even... Worst boss. Now, like, Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII. How many forms does he have? Like, three? Sephiroth, then God Sephiroth, and then freaking Ultra Sephiroth. I'm like, God, will you just die? But it is what it is. That's, uh, that's that. But, yeah, Final Fantasy VII is probably one of my favorite, ga favorite games in the series. Favorite game. No, number one. Number two, 
slightly ahead of number two, Final Fantasy IX. That game is fucking epic. That should be remade. Well, not well, not not remade. Well, I guess remade. Yeah, updated a little bit with the new graphics and everything. Give it a nice 2024 or 25 boost. Maybe add a couple of things in there. Not new levels, maybe new weapons. New weapons, new abilities, that'd be nice. Maybe new summons. New FMVs. Good stuff. Good stuff if that game ever got remade. I would freaking, I don't even care. I would sell my house to buy that fucking game. And a PlayStation 5 to boot. But. Can't do it now. Can't do it now. But I will. I, I mean, I, when. I mean, I'll get a PS5 eventually, but not right now. Not right now. Because I can't find it. It's too much money still. Still $500 fucking dollars for a PS5? When did the PS5 come out? Like a, like a couple years ago? By the time, by the time I actually have money to actually find one and get one. It, and not, you know, my, I could probably get it off eBay, but, you know. Buying things off eBay is not so great, Al. They want an arm and a leg and they don't ship it to you sometimes and it comes out damaged and it's just ridiculous. You know. I would get it at uh, DealDash.com, but you know something like, that you see those stories like, "Oh, I bought a PS5 for fifty cents." I'm like, what? How did you get that? Fifty cents, really? Probably with the starting price. You know how they 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 bait you. It's like, "Oh, you, I got this for fifty cents." No, you didn't. That was the starting price. You ain't gonna get a PlayStation Five for fifty cents. Come on. You forgot to add shipping and handling? Dumbass. Yeah. That too. Alright, anyway. So, yeah, that's all that. So, we move on. Alright, enough about, enough about the bull funky. Let's get into the video. 17 minutes I wasted. I don't give a shit. I don't. But you watched for 17 minutes. Thank you. Oh, where's my, where's my pen? Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Here with a pen. Do like Jimmy Fallon. I haven't done this in a while. Thank you for watching my video. Anyway, move on. Alright, so let's get into your AEW Dynamite! I know it's late and it's loud, but Dynamite! Review for December the 6th to... 2023, week three of the Continental Classic. Some good stuff tonight. It was a pretty, wasn't a great show per se, but still decent at least. Uh, we had that, and pretty much the big one: Edge and Christian for the TNT title in Canada. Even though they should have done this on pay per view, but I, I think we all know the reason for it. We'll move on. Alright, so we are emanating tonight, my friends, from the Bell Center in that shithole city and country of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. A. Eh? And that's that. Alright, and as always, our commentary team on Wednesday nights, the man behind the mask, Excalibur, the biggest bet fan I know, Taz. Red Hook for the. And the legendary man himself, my good friend, might be yours too, and he is Tony Baloney Shavani. Man is a legend. You can tell him that yourself. If you ever meet Tony Baloney, tell him I said hello. And tell him he's a fucking legend. Because that's what he is. He is legend. Jerry. Very fucking legendary. Should be in the Hall of Fame, but I don't know why he's not. Anyway, we move on. Alright. Alright, so... We're from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. You know, you know what that means. Besides being in the Twilight Zone with the fans, even though the fans weren't that hot tonight, as always. 
But anyway, I mean, for you uh, Canada, uh, Canadian fans out there, AEW is going to be doing a Canadian tour for April, uh, excuse me, March, April, May, and July. So you're going to see Rampage, Collision, and Dynamite in a city near you if you live in Canada. That's going to be nice. I, that's nice, but I, I don't know why they're do it, doing it. Probably because they need more fans to watch, I guess. I don't know. Well, fans at the arena. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, AEW feels like it's going down the toilet. I mean, Collision's ratings weren't even... I mean, they were up from last week. 400, around 450,000. It is what it is. Uh, NXT's uh, rating went up a little bit. A little bit, not too much, but I think it was 641, 650, somewhere around that area. So, I can only imagine what Dynamite's going to do tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. Well, when we get the ratings, probably be tomorrow or by Friday. I would I would assume that, you know, Dynamite's going to pop a good rating and do better than NXT. But, yeah, when SmackDown comes around, yeah, we all know SmackDown's going to beat... Uh, be Dynamite and NXT combined. Because it's on Fox! And we got that. Uh, CM Punk's going to be on SmackDown. Randy Orton and his monotonous voice would be on SmackDown. Joe Corner made me laugh. Said The Rock was going to be on. I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. The Rock. Dwayne. Yeah, The Rock. Kiss my ass. Not, not you, Joe. I'm just saying... Dwayne, you can kiss my ass. If you smell what Peter Joseph is cooking. I can't do I can't do the eyebrow raise, I'm sorry. But it is what it is. Anyway, alright. Alright, so after we we uh here we get the opening sequence, the pyro, we are live from Montreal. Excalibur runs down the card. All the matches in the Continental Classic Gold League Tournament, week three. And uh, Edge versus Christian, the main event for the TNT title. Alright, so we're all ready to go. And our first match out of the gate in the Continental Classic Gold League. We have uh, one of the leaders in the tournament. And that is the righty. He wants the righty. The vile thing. Give me Vaughn. Vaughn? You mean... Vic Vaughn? Yeah, I, I, he's due. He is. So, anyway, they want the righty, the vile thing. That's John Moxley. So, Mox comes out, and he takes on former Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion, the man from Mexico, and the leader of La Faction Ignobles, and that is Bruce. A uh, pretty good match to go to start. They strike away at each other, beat the fuck out of each other. Not not per se big beefy men slapping meat, but you know, not much of a slobber knocker to start. But then it got a little bit better. So Bruce suplexes Box hard on the arm. Hey, that rhymes. Ow, ow. Anyway, then they go outside into the crowd. I'm like, okay, where's the twenty count here? Because they're going to draw, but AEW don't give two fucks about a count out. Anyway. Then we get a trip, another trip into the crowd. Hey, you got your money's worth. If you're sitting in the nosebleed seats. Anyway. Roosh puts, puts Mox in a chair, hits him with a beer. Beer, beer face. And uh, that really uh, woke Moxley up. I don't know what kind of beer it was. It was a Heineken. It was, well, a cool, it was Coors Light. Uh, it wasn't Budweiser. I was telling you that one. Well, might have been Budweiser. It wasn't Bud Light. Anyway, I heard uh, Kid Rock talk to the guy from Anheuser Busch. Now I think they're, you know, everything's even keel. Maybe Bolt Light will come out again. I don't know. 
I don't know. That was a good beer. I used to drink Bud Light once once upon a time. Not a lot, but... Most of the only the beers the only beers I drank was Bud Light, Bud Ice, uh, and uh, Corona. That's it. I don't drink beer at all, really. I mean, maybe once once in a while, but I don't really drink that much beer. I mean, I do drink alcohol, which is basically Jack and Coke, Henny and Coke, Blood House, which is basically tastes like grape <laughs> grape grape uh, cough syrup. Or Diamond Tap. That's what it tastes like. I'm not kidding. I tried it for the first time way back in the day when I used to, my clubbing days. We went to a bar because uh, my friend knew the bartender. And, she, you know, that was at a bar where they, they were in, in their uh, bikinis. So I was like, oh, this is great. I got to go here sometime. You know, and then all, uh, my, my friend bought us all shots. He's like, Pete, you want this? I was like, what is this? Blood House. I'm like, okay. I'll try it. Try it. You'll like it, Mikey. So I was like, ooh, ooh, this tastes like cough syrup. It was good, man. It was it was tasty. It was good. I had another one. Two times. But it was good. It was good. We good. We had a pregame, and then we went to the club and danced our asses off. And no, I didn't have any more drinks. Oh, well, maybe. Did I have? No, I didn't. I wanted to, but I was kind of a little bit buzzy, buzzed after the, the second uh, Blood House. It was like freaking like a big shock. Not a big shock. It was like this, this big. It was good. But like I said, the only alcohol I drink is Jack and Coke, Henny and Coke, Coke and Rum, Johnny Walker, Black. Or red, uh, maybe the blue label one, but Johnny Walker is fucking lethal. Not J lethal, but it's lethal. Ooh, it is strong. And then you could just have freaking Jack Daniels out the freaking bottle, like Lemmy. You know what I mean? Lemmy Cube, I say I drink, I drink that whiskey. All right, and then I walk out with my cook out. All right. Yeah, his birthday's coming up. Lemmy's birthday's coming up in two weeks, my friends. I can't wait for that. And we move on. Also, uh, next week... Actually, next week... Next weekend is uh, the mighty Chris Holworth and... Of In This Moment and the beautiful... My metal sister. I would say my metal mom, but that's Sharon. But my metal sister, Maria Brink, her birthday's coming up next weekend. I can't... Oh, so good. I can't wait. That's why... That's why December is the greatest month in the world, but the greatest days in the world. I mean, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Lord! Birthday is the same day as Lemmy and a certain other guy I know. I don't know who that guy is, though, but... Anyway. Ah, uh, so we'll get that. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, so, Roosh throws, throws a beer at him, at Mox, wakes him up. Then he, then he takes Mox in, in, back inside the ring, finally. Then he uh, throws Moxley in the corner and does the Naito Tranquilo pose, like Andrade, Naito. Then Mox just, like, like gets up and he's like, Fuck you, motherfucker! And then Rush just like, Oh, you want you? Oh, me? Fuck me? No, fuck you! Watch your mouth. You're bad. You're in life with a speck bottom. Anyway. So, Roosh's like, well, okay, you want, you want to give me these? I'm going to pound the fuck out of you. Pounds the bejesus out of Mox. But then Mox comes back with a Gilmore Kata! Bang! Stop stealing my move, Mox. You bastard. Anyway. Then a super black gives Mox a near fall. They go back to the floor. And then Roosh comes back with a belly to belly into the barricade. Ow! Oof, that hurt. As we go to break, we come back. Roosh then hits a pal driver! Then a top rope superplex for a near fall. I'm like, damn it, I didn't even pin him, pin Mox. Yeesh. Then they go to the floor a third time. 
and they find on the floor, then they crash on the ground, I guess they're beat, I don't know, excuse me, and then, and then Moxley goes over to whisper something to Roosh, don't know what that was, and, uh, we get that, and then, now we get the count out, I had to, I have to say it, Referee! Do something! Reminds me of that, I, I don't know what line it, what, where that movie comes from is, Do something! Do something! Do something! I'm gonna find that movie, I'm gonna, if I find that clip, I'm gonna put it on my community tab. But anyway, yeah, now the referee's counting them out, why don't you count them out? The other two times they're outside the ring and in the crowd, you moron. Anyway, so now he's finally counting them out. Both men get in at nine. And they trade strikes in the middle of the ring. Whoosh! Mox, Mox, hard down into the corner. Moxie comes out with the King Cock Lariat. Not Whoosh for a loop. Then he picks him up, hits the Death Rider for a near fall. Didn't know he was... I, I, I thought Roosh was done there, but somehow Roosh kicked out at 2.999. And then Mox like, alright, you, you, you're you gonna kick out of that? <laughs> Locks in the Bulldog Choke, and basically, Roosh passed out. So then Paul, Tur Paul Turner's the referee, you fucking idiot. And everybody says you were the next world champ. <laughs> no, you're not. Anyway, so... So Moxley gets the win, and he is perfect. 3-0 in the tournament. Nine points. And next week, oh boy, he faces Swerve. Woo! That's basically going to be for the Continental Classic uh, Gold League, uh, Gold League uh, win. The winner of the Gold League, basically, is next week. And I'm thinking it's going to be Swerve, because it's in Texas next week. In Dallas, that's where he pretty much is from. Along with a certain prince, but that's another story for another time. So, have fun there. Uh, but yeah, that's it. You know, so Moxley gets the win. You know, he's like, I'm out of here. He leaves, and then Rouge is like, I never chopped! I never chopped! I never chopped! I say. And Paul's always like, oh, you passed out, dude. But I never chopped, they say. I never chopped. And then he goes outside the ring, he's like, he's like talking to the fans, like, do I tap? No. Referee's decision is final, dude. It sucks, but. I mean, I, I mean, I agree with Roosh, you never tap, but then, you know, basically, you know, you fell asleep. And Paul Turner's like, oh, that's it. Done, he's out. You know, Rouge, you get the Randy Savvy special. You may not like it, but you must accept it. Ooh, yeah. Exactly. So that's it. So Mox gets the win. Match was all right. Gave it three, uh, three out of five stars. And that's pretty much it. So Mox leads the Gold League now with nine points. He has two matches remaining. Uh, he has Swerve and, and Jay White. Oh, that was going to be epic match. Especially like next week is going to be epic with Swerve. And then the following week, right before Christmas, is pretty much the Gold, the, uh, the gold League, fi uh, well, the winner of the Gold League, basically. Well, next week is, next week is definitely going to be the, the winner. Because uh, if Swerve loses, I mean, he still is going to have... Uh, act, uh, he has two matches left because he uh, had a match tonight with. Uh, what do you have a match with tonight? Um, blah, blah, blah. With Mark Briscoe. And. Uh, I don't know what happens if both men are tied. They might have an extra match, I think. I don't think, ever, I, don't think I ever seen that in the G1. I don't remember because I have I only watched the G1 since 2015. So 
If anybody knows, let me know in the comments if the G1 ever had a had a uh, in the in the A block or the B block. Now it's now it's like four blocks now. But I don't. I, as far as I know, I don't remember the A block or B block ending in a tie. Because the B block, you usually get a winner, and then the A block, if there was ever a tie, I would assume that there would be an extra match to see who faces the guy in the B block, or, or they could do a triple threat match, and the winner becomes the champion, I guess. Not the champion, I said the winner of the G1. I don't, I don't know if that ever happened, but if it ever does, I would probably think that Think that it will be either a another match with those two people, and the winner of that goes to the G1 Finals to face the guy in the B block, or the C block, D block, whatever it is, and then the winner of, of that go, wins the G1, and gets the gets the briefcase, which he, which he cashes in on the world champion at Wrestle Kingdom. I'll have to see what happens with that. But right now, Moxley leads with nine points. He is perfect in the goal league. But I think we all knew that Moxley and Swerve might might be the guys to win win the block. But we'll see. Can we see Moxley and Brian Danielson again? Mm -hmm. Or most likely we're gonna get Swerve and Brian Danielson at uh at World's End. Speaking of Brian Danson, he's got two matches this week because you know he had that uh, him and Andrade. So I don't know how, but they got they got they got uh, the first the first week by. So now Andrade has to fight has to fight you know twice. Not I don't not this week, but uh, he he is fighting Brian Danson on Collision, and it's already been taped. And whew, it was a pretty damn good match, from what I heard. Uh, and Danielson, Danielson's eye got all fucked up again. Now they're worried about about that. If he can still continue the tournament, we'll see what happens with that. He, he will also be on Rampage. Um, I forget who he's facing on Rampage, but. So, um, after, after this week, uh, pretty much everybody, well, besides, uh, yeah, I think everybody, be, and on, everybody's gonna have, like, two matches left. Or maybe one match, so, I don't know how it's, I think Danielson, well, Danielson will have three matches, everybody else has two, after this week. Because it's week three in the Blue League. So, everybody will have... Two matches left after this week, and then next week is week four, and then pretty much by Christmas is the final week, and then we'll find out who wins the gold league and the blue league, and they meet at World's End for that for the North American Triple Crown, the Ring of Honor World Title, the New Japan Strong Open Weight Championship, and the brand new Continental Classic Title Tournament uh, Title Tournament Belt, or just the Classic Continental Belt. It sounds ridiculous. There's even a belt. That's going to be defended? I, I don't like that idea. I don't. To ha some guy have three belts. And has to defend all three belts. Not Maybe in one night. That's crazy. What's his dra uh, ultimate dragon? When he had like how many belts? Remember when he had all those belts and then he would lose them all after that? He had like, how many belts he had? Like eight, eight to ten belts he had at one point. I mean, not like Austin Aries or even like Kenny Omega. Kenny had like four belts at one time. He had the Impact World Title. He had the AEW World Title. Then he had the the uh, AAA Title. So he had really three. I thought he had four. I think he had the I um IWGP U, uh, United States Title. And then, in succession, he lost to all of them. It's crazy. First one he lost was the Impact title. I believe. Yeah, he did. I know he lost that to Chris Young on the first Rampage. 
Then, right after that, he lost the, uh, the AEW World title to Hangman. Hangman Adam Page. And then, he lost the, uh, Triple A title, I think, to, um, who did he lose that belt to? No, I think he just dropped it because, well, he vacated it because of injury. And then I know he lost the UK belt, uh, the UK belt, sorry, the US title, IWGB US title to Mr. Switchblade, wait, what is Switchblade? Jay White, I know that. And now he, ha uh, he had it back, and I think, uh, I thought he lost, the, I think, I thought he lost it to, um, Os Ocean Spray. But I think Ocean Spray won it from, I forget who, but I think he won it from Kenny, I think, I don't remember. Yeah, he won it from Kenny. He won it from Kenny. So, there you go. But it is what it is. And uh, speaking of Ocean Spray, he will be on that Canadian uh, run from March, April, May, and I think one show in July. So, good to be a Canadian, I guess, watching all those shows coming up in March. When we move on. Move on. Alright, so three out of five stars for Roosh and Moxley. And Moxley has nine points. Let's see what happens with that. Alright, after that, we get a video on the Battle of the Jays. Jay Leto, Pac Machismo. Ooh, yeah. Dig it. And the Switchblade. Play with the Switchblade. Jay White. By the way, two street me for the love of God. Guns up. That's that. Alright, so we got that. That match is coming up a little bit later. Uh, all right, after that, we have Renee Paquette on stage, and she brings out, well, the man that screams a lot, that's Roddy! So, Roddy and the kingdom of, I'm Matt Taven, and if you don't like Matt Taven, you are Melvin, and the man that punches people in the dick, and that's Mike Canellis Bennett. Oh, I got that. Nice, nice shirt there, my Taven. Nice. Nice giraffe shirt. Where'd you get that at, Toys R Us? <laughs> you, you steal from Jeffrey? Anyway, so Roddy comes out. Starts chanting, Rene! Samoa! Adam! Max! I'm like, Calm down, Roddy. Stop, lay off the coffee. Tranquilo, take it easy. Take it easy. Get that man, uh, something, man. Like, you know, calm down, Roddy. Anyway, so basically, he wants Samoa Joe to hurt his best. Well, he wants to hurt the AEW champion Maxwell Jacob Fart Knocker, and still thinks that MJF's a bad person. He thinks he's the devil. He's gonna stab Samoa Joe in the back. And then he's like, oh, he's not a bad guy. Right. So basically, Roddy is sick and tired of being sick and tired of being held back in his wheelchair. And you see the, the camera pop up. I'm like, oh, he's going to stand up. Next strong, my friends. So then he's like, and then he just pops up, takes the chair, throws it out off the stage. And then Matt Tim's like, it's a Christmas miracle. And then freaking Taz is going crazy. It's a miracle! <laughs> and then he's, he says, I'm t I, I was held back for far too long. Man, he, he is doing this gimmick to a T. And I love it. Just cut down. Cut it down a notch. It'll take it down a notch with the screaming and everything. But, yeah. So, Roddy is... Back, you know, you start to, I don't know if he's gonna take out that neck brace, but we'll see. But he is, he is, he has risen like Lazarus, and not even Lazarus. Like she's like, he is, he has risen like Jesus Christ the Lord on Easter Day, and that's the power of neck strong, my friends. Neck strong. That's that. All right, so I get that three point two five out of five stars, and we'll see what happens with that. Alright, then we go to the back once again. I don't know how Renee got to the back that quick. Maybe she ran. Uh, but Renee's outside 
Maxwell Jacob Fartknocker's dressing room, trying to get a word with him about him and Samoa Joe taking on the Devil's Minions coming up a little later. Uh, but then we see Hangman Adam Page about to do some cowboy shit. He comes, he, he walks past Renee, and he's like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. So, Hangman uh, talks about that he wasn't allowed to fly for a little bit because of the, all that, that, that hellacious match with Swerve at full gear. So that's why he's been gone for a little bit. Then he, then he basically t uh, talks to Swerve and says, Swerve, you broke into my house, you, you went into my son's room, and it took a bunch of people to beat, a uh, bunch of your people to beat me at full gear. But I took something from you, and you're not going to get it back, and this is far from over. Uh, so, Swerve, uh, he says, Swerve, you want something that, that I took, but now I'm going to make sure you never have it back. Whether, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Then anyway, uh, after that, Maxwell Jacob Fartknocker just pops out of his locker room and starts mocking Paige. He's like, hey, we got the flavor of the month. Blah, blah, blah. And they argue about their history until... Max says, says, uh, the Hangman is jealous over his one-year title reign, and Hangman had a six-month title reign, and not being, at, uh, not being as long as his, then he accuses Hangman of being the devil, hmm. and a fight almost breaks out, and then Samoa Joe comes in and says, hey, hey, stop it, Max, stop! So, man, MGF is... You know, he, he's still a scumbag, and he's making more enemies than he really needs right now. I mean, now is now the possibility of Angman Adam Page as the devil? Hmm. I'm interested. If it happens, I'm interested. I made a theory that, that the, the minions are, are uh, members of the Dark Order. And then the leader, the leader is probably going to be, like, Hangman. Then I thought about it for a little bit. What if the Bucks were the minions? But who would be who would be the devil then? Kenny? But I doubt that because Kenny and Jericho are in a little thing with the Don Callis family. So that kind of throws that idea out the window. But, you know, who knows? It could, it could be the Bucks. It could be the... Well... The Bucks and probably Hangman as one of the minions because there's four of them, I remember. But I think I think after what we saw tonight, I think it's pretty much clear that the minions are Kyle O'Reilly, Matt Taven, Roddy, and Mike Bennett, and the leader, Adam Cole Bebe. The return of the Undisputed Era. I don't know why Mike Bennett would be in it. Maybe my, maybe was not Mike Bennett. That would be kind of weird if you have the if you bring back the undisputed era. Adam Cole when he, Adam Cole is officially coming back, probably by April or May. I don't think they're gonna drag this out all the way to May with who's the devil. We already know is the devil's gonna be gonna be on max probably at World's End in MJ's hometown of Long Island. But, you know, then again, they might do something like Aces and Ace, where it took so long for somebody to get unmasked. And then the storyline went for like two years. That they run a, run a muck in fucking TNA. And all it took was, uh, you know, Bully Ray finally getting beat for the world title. By a certain guy named Saban. saying, but I don't know if, you know, Tony Khan might be doing something like that, people thinking Retribution's coming back, like, Musa Ali might be the, the leader, or one of the minions, and Dolph Ziggler is gonna be the devil, like, why would Dolph be the devil? I know you want somebody new, but Dolph Ziggler is the devil, 
That makes no sense. Mustafa Ali is the devil. Dumb. I think that's a dumb idea. It's most likely going to be Jack Perry because he got... Uh, his suspension is now up. So his return to television is pretty much imminent. So that's probably the, the number one guy that's going to be the devil. Everybody's saying, oh, when he laughed last week, it sounded like Jack Perry with a, you know, a, a, like a darker voice. Jack Perry, you know, with the, with the, the distorted mic. Distorted voice, I should say, not the mic. So, probably is going to be Jack Perry. I have a feeling it's going to be Jack Perry. And then one of the minions is probably going to be Wardlow. And then the other minions are probably going to be the Kingdom and Roddy, most likely. Well, yeah, the Kingdom and Roddy. But then again, maybe the Devil's not the actual leader. Remember how Ace and Ace turned out? Who was the leader of Aces and Ace? It turned out to be Bully Ray at the time. But it took, like, he, it took like everybody was coming out at first under mask, and then they would get unmasked. One was D'Lo, one was G, one was D'Lo, one was Devon, and then Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, Kennedy, and then Wes Briscoe, uh. You know, Eric Bischoff's son, uh, Mike Knox, I don't know why Mike Knox was in it, uh, Mike Knox was in it, I mean, they had a lot of members, almost felt like the NWO, but, Taz was in it, and not that he did anything, he just stood by the free, you know, he just did commentary, just wearing the Aces Nate shirt. And then Bully Ray was the last guy to actually, you know, he was the actual leader, because we never knew who the leader was at the time. And then when Bully Ray turned pretty much on on TNA and turned on Hulk Hogan Brother in the cage, when when Devon came in the cage, threw Bully Ray the hammer, and Bully Ray just smacked the hammer in Jeff Hardy's fucking dome, knocked him out and won the, uh, won the TNA title, right in front of Hogan. Hogan's like, what? Around the same time, Bully Ray married Bookie Hogan. I hate you! After Bully Ray turned on Hogan and her. And he started going out with Brooke Tessmacher, you lucky bitch. That was it. I mean, Ace and Ace were like... Went on, went on to be one of the probably the best fucking factions... Groups, whatever you have, whatever have you in TNA. Not immortal, not fortune, fortune four. Well, no other group can compare the freaking aces and eights. I know the Bullet Club is there, but not, not even a Bullet Club. It's just uh, Chris, uh, Chris Bay and uh, Ace Austin, and I think a, excuse me, they had a Japanese guy. Got his name, but not the same Bullet Club that we all know and love. You know, I love ABC. That tag team with Chris Bay and Ace Austin. Tag team champions in, in TNA. They are so good. Chris Bay is a fucking machine. I would love for him to go for to jump from Impact to AEW. I would love it. We'll go to Japan. Well, probably he, well, he did Japan too, I think. We know Ace Austin did because he's in Bullet Club, obviously. So Chris Bay obviously went to Japan too. But we move on. All right, we move on. Uh so yeah. All right, so um, maybe we're gonna see Hangman versus MJF for the world title again. But you know, MJF says that you might be the devil or Hangman Adam Page. Maybe, but we'll see what happens with that. And it gets a little bit more interesting uh, coming up in a little bit. All right, so I gave that segment 3.25 out of 5 stars, and that's it. All right, match number two in the Gold League for this week. We have Mark Briscoe, the funky chicken himself, reach for the sky, boy. And as always, we pay homage to the great man himself, you great man, you Jay fucking Briscoe. So, 
Mark looking for some points in the tournament. If he loses this match, he is out of the tournament. Because no, mathematically, he cannot win the tournament at all. So he needs to win in the worst way. But he's facing another another top guy and on the leaderboard with six points. And that is our good friend Swerve Strickland, who comes out with Brian Cage. And my good friend and yours, the real Prince of the Prophecy and the Purge. And that is Prince Nana of the Mogul Embassy. And I think it's time to dance. Let's do it. One, two, three. I swerve when I drop. And I swerve when I drop. And I Gotta love it, man. You gotta love Prince Nana. He is a national treasure. He's, he's a better national treasure than Wheeler Yuta. Did you know? Did you know? Wheeler Yuta is the type of guy that steals presents from Santa. Come on now, dude. Somebody said, somebody in, in um, somebody on Twitter said, Wheeler Yuta is the type of guy that steals Santa's, Santa's milk and cookies. That's sad, dude. That's savage. That is savage. Wheeler, you're the type of guy that wakes up Christmas morning and it's not even Christmas. He goes downstairs and there's no presents for him. Sucks to be you, dude. Wheeler, you're the type of guy that gets stuck in a chimney. I would say something about Kwanzaa, but I can't think of a joke for it. I don't want. I don't want to get b b blasted by my good African American friends. But I do have black friends, by the way. I just want to point that out. So if I say uh, an N word, but not that N word, the N with the L E T at the end, that's not racist, by the way. As I say it all the time to my American, African American friends, they don't mind it. Even if I said the N word with the with the hard A, they don't mind it either. Because I grew up with a lot of African American friends back in the day, but I never used that word back in the day. So I thought it was offense. Uh, that that I never nobody ever called. People, people of you know African American people back in the my, my day, you know the eighties, pretty much they didn't say the N word with the hard E R or the A until like the nineties and in the two thousands up to now. But it is, it is what it is. But people still get you know get upset. Some black people get get upset. When they call call them the N word with the hard A, not as I mean more more uh, less than the uh, the N with the hard E R. Would you call me? Well, just be nice. Oh okay. Anyway, blah 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 blah. All right, so so Swerve comes out with with. Nah, nah, dancing, dancing, dancing. He's a national treasure. Way better than Wheeler Yuta. More relevant than Wheeler Yuta, too. But anyway, we get this match. It was, wasn't that bad. It's also with Swerve reversing... Uh, he does a oh, yeah, uh, basic headlock by Mark Grisco. Swerve reversed it into his, one of his own. Mark comes back with a boot to face. Then starts hammering away in the corner. Grabs a suplex... As uh, Tony Baloney talks about how many wrestlers in WCW would love to play spoiler in the tournament. Why are you talking about the WCW for? <laughs> that made no sense. Anyway, they get back up. Swerve takes Mark down. Sets up a middle rope elbow to the back of the neck. Ow. Uh, then a neck breaker gives Swerve a near fall. Mark comes back, sends him, sends Swerve to the floor for a drop kick through the ropes. Then the apron blockbuster is broken up. Then they chop each other on the apron. Swerve then back chops him over the barricade in front of the crowd, even though there was like a big section, of, like a 
big sack here is nobody there. So then Swerve jumps up on top of the barricade and then does like a barricade suplex on Mark. Ow! That was crazy. I mean, good balance there, Swerve and Mark. I would have helped out. <laughs> Don't die! I'll help! I would have saved them. So I'm a good guy. I'm, I'm one of those guys that helps out people. Helps out the wrestlers. I would do it. Hey, if I could I could hold up Bobby Fish for Eddie Edwards to chop to death. Then I could hold up pretty much everybody else. You know what I mean? So sometimes it pays to sit ringside. But it does have its disadvantages. Right, Roddy? You still owe me a coat from 2012, my friend. So if I ever meet Roddy again, I'm going to mention that. Say, hey, Roddy, you know, you owe me uh, a Coke. Why do I owe you a Coke for 2012? I'm like, dude, you know, go get me a Coke, probably. Here, here's a Coke. Say, like, somebody get that man a Coke. I'm like, Roddy, I'm just kidding. I mean, thank you, but... I'm oh, sorry. Thank you to Roddy... For buying me my Coke 11, 12 years later. <laughs> but it's a joke. It's a joke. Anyway, we move on with that. Alright, so Tony talks about that. Uh, so we get the the, uh, the barricade suplex by Swerve, which was crazy. They go back in the ring and we go go we go to break, come back, Swerve works on Mark's arm, but he fights up. And with some chops. Then a fisherman's buster gives Mark a near fall. Swerve comes right back with a kick to the head. And they go in the corner. And then they crash out to the floor. Where Mark hits a quick flippy dibbity doo. And they go right back in. Hey, where's the count out? Anyway, they go back in. And Mark hits one hell of a laliato. For a near fall on Swerve. Goes for the chain driller. It's countered. And Swerve hits the house call. On Mark. Goes for the 450. Mark gets his knees up. And then Mark goes up top. Tries for a froggy move. But Swerve got his knees up. So counter for counter. Which is nice. Swerve then rolls him up for a near fall. Then we have 5 minutes left in the match. And they go to the apron. Uh, Mark tries again for the Jadra on the apron, but Swerve plants him with a Death Valley driver. Ow! Then they go in the ring. They go in the ring. Mark's basically done. So Swerve goes up top. Hits the Swerve stomp. One, two, three. Swerve is now perfect at 3-0. and oh. So he has 9 points. Uh, under 16 minute match. But Swerve gets the win. Match was pretty good. 3.25 out of 5 stars. So, it's all going to come down to next week in Dallas, Texas. Swerve versus John Moxley for basically the Gold League leaderboard. And possibly the Gold League, uh, the Gold League win. win. The winner of the Gold League, basically, that's what I meant. So we get all that. That's that, but good match. Uh, sadly, Mark is eliminated, but he can still... Wrestle in the tournament, maybe play spoiler, but he is eliminated right now, and uh, Jay Lethal is now now uh, hoping to get some points as he's going to take on Jay White and see if uh, Jay Lethal can, can play spoiler. But well, we'll see, see what happens with that. All right, we move on. We move on. All right, then we go to the back with Renee Paquette once again. This time she has the beautiful. Oh, she is hot. Mariah May is all excited. So, once again, be in AEW for her very first match, but she's not going to tell us who her opponent is. Hmm. And when that match is going to be. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see with the beautiful Mariah May. And, you know, she's getting ready for, you know, her bestie Tony Storm's title match as she takes on Sky Blue for the AEW Women's Championship coming up in a little bit. 
we got all that. Alright, so I gave that 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it. Then we move on, we get the music of Samoa Joe. And he comes out, we were, we were supposed to get Samoa Joe and Maxwell Jacob Fartknocker against the Devil's Henchmen. So Joe goes to the ring, then the lights start flickering again. I'm like, uh-oh. And then we see the minions surround the ring, all four of them. Then the lights completely go out. I'm like, uh-oh, Samoa Joe got beat down, right? No. The lights come back on. They're all gone. Joe's looking around. What's going on? Then the devil pops up. He just pops up on screen. And then it cuts right to the back where we see MJF down in a heap. He is gone. He is done. He got knocked the fuck out. And then we see a broken beer bottle next to him. Hmm. I mean, hanging at a page. He loves to drink that beer. Does it fit? Possibly. But then again, remember what Jack Perry said? Real glass! Cry me a river! Mmm. That reveal is gonna be something when it happens probably by the end of, the end of this month. So we're all gonna know who it is. And uh, that's pretty much it for that. But... I mean, that beer bottle gave so many clues. Jack Perry, with the class reference to CM Punk, and Hagman Adam Page, because he loves to drink beer. Somebody said, Cowboy James Storm. Yeah, right. He doesn't even wrestle anymore, I don't think. Why would it be Cowboy James Storm as the devil? And then Bobby Roode's coming back to AEW, right? No, Bobby Roode's... Bobby Roode! Is a producer in WWE right now. Why would he want to leave WWE and go to AEW and reform probably one of the greatest tag teams in um, TNA? That's beer money. That's that's that. But then again, imagine this freaking uh, Braden Walker, you know, uh, Chris Harris. <laughs> that'll be that'll be really messed up. Like, freaking Cowboy James Storm is the devil, and Chris Harris is one of the minions. That'd be weird. Anyway, we get all that. So basically, a no match, and then um, so we see Max, Max, we see Max knocked out with a beer bottle shot, class beer by the way, actual beer bottle, and. Joe's like frantic, he runs all the way to the back. And that's it. Nothing else ap happened after that. We don't know how Max is. I guess we're going to have to wait to see what hap what they say on on Rampage and Collision this, this weekend. And then maybe something else happens next week with, um, jo with Joe and the Minions and Max. We always have to see what happens with them. And we move on. Alright, after the break, we get a look at what we just saw. And then we go to a promo from John Buxley. He says that he's humble for everything because he knows what he is capable of doing, obviously. So, he expected to be perfect in the tournament at 3-0. And he expects to go a perfect 5-0. So then, Swerve and Prince Nana come in. And Swerve says, it's going to take more than you to beat me. And that's pretty much it. You know, Swerve's like, it's like, I'll see you in Dallas. That match is going to be a slobber knocker. And that's pretty much it. I can't wait for that. So, three out of five stars for that little segment. And we move on. Then we get, I don't know what this was. Ben, I'm going to have a problem saying this name. Ben Makowitz. Uh, host of Turner Classic Movies on the, the Turner Classic Movie Network. Who's this guy? Uh, who are you? Ah! What is your name? Right, Bailey. Give me a hug. Anyway. So, Ben Makowitz introduces Timeless Tony Storm. 
playing it up like, you know, completely straight, listing off some of her films. Not X-rated films. Then again, I don't know, maybe some home movies with her and Juice Robinson, I don't know, but anyway. So that was kind of weird. So then we see Tony Storm come out with Luta. As she defends the AEW Women's Title for the very first time against Sky Blue. Uh, Mario May was at uh, was came out with her. I didn't see her. I might have missed it. Anyway, so match was meh. So they started with some basic grappling to start. Sky Blue, uh, no, excuse me. Tony gets the better of that. Then she knocks Sky Blue to the apron, but lands on Luther's shoulders. So they're going to be superplex to take Sky Blue down. Then beats her ass on the floor. And then hits that sexy running hip attack against the barricade. Ow. Knocks Sky Blue for a loop. As we go to break, we come back. Tony misses the wind-up punch and gets kicked in the head. And then Sky Blue starts to make her come back with a high cross body for a near fall and, and her version of the running sexy hip attack on Tony Storm knocking her silly. Then she hits Code Blue. I thought she was about to win the belt, but nope. Tony Storm kicked out of that too. And she goes up top. Tony catches her. Then a superplex once again brings Sky Blue down. But she goes for the sexy hip attack as the camera goes into black and white. Nice. That gets counted into a fruit roll-up. But Tony reversed that into a sunset flip. Well, actually, it was a roll-up. And then Tony kind of reversed that into like a sunset flip type roll-up. With uh, sky blue shoulders nowhere even near the mat. But the referee's like, one, two, three. So, I mean, sky blue might have to talk to Tony Khan about that. My shoulder was up. So, Scott, uh, excuse me, Tony Storm retains the AEW Women's Championship in just under nine and a half minutes. Match was meh. And that's it. So, I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. Uh, so, we got that. And then Tony's celebrating in the ring. And then we hear the music of little young, little young Rio. Rio is back from her tour of Japan. And I don't know what you were wearing. But she comes out. Skippy, skippy. Hey, get that! You know. Comes out and kind of chases off Tony Storm with a drop kick. And it looks like we're going to get Rio versus Tony Storm for the AEW uh, Women's Championship. I guess. Well, that's that. So, uh, Rio is back. Certain. So, somebody I know is very happy about that, because that's his waifu. One of his waifus. But, I digress on that. So, that's it. But, yeah, Rio, what were you wearing? You look like you came out of a, a clothing store. Like, you were one of those models from Rainbow or uh, any department store. She came off the rack, basically. It is what it is. Well, bro, nice to see Rio back. The first ever AEW Women's Champion. Who who beat the native beast, Nyla Rose, on the very first Dynamite in Washington, D.C. five years ago. There you go. Let me move on. Alright. So after that, we go to a video for Edge and Christian. Nicely done. Then before the main event, we get the last match in week three of the Gold League in the Continental Classic Tournament. We have the Battle of the Jays, Jay White, the Switchblade, B with Switchblade, taking on Black Machismo. Oh yeah, dig it. Jay Lethal. Jay has to get a win or he is eliminated. So they go at it in the middle of that ring. Jay Lethal gets the better of that. Then he does the woo. Nature boy! Ric Flair's strut that gets broken up as Jay White fires off some lethal chops, no pun intended. And then Jay Lethal takes him down into a basement drop kick. Then he does the strut. Woo! And then Jay White gets in a hard knockdown of his own 
as we go to break, we come right back. The fans are starting to make uh, Holy J chants, so it's just weird. Holy J! Let's go, J! You fucking marks. But I digress. Uh, J Lethal takes over on that exchange. Goes for the, goes for the, back. show me an elbow! Raining down from heaven, ooh, yeah! Get it! Hits that, I thought he was gonna get the win, but, but, Jay White kicked out at two! And then Jay White goes after the knee, and then a suplex in the corner, ow! Then a teardrop, bream, basta! Gives Jay White a near fall, then he sets up a sleeper suplex, Knock, knocking Jay Lethal down. He goes for the Blade Runner, but that gets countered. And then Jay Lethal tries for the tries for Lethal Injection. That gets countered as well. And then Jay White takes out the knee. Shoot the leg down your son. Anyway, uh, Jay White goes for another Blade Runner. That gets countered into a roll up. But then Jay White reverses that into one of his own. So like, kind of like the Tony Storm match. Roll up, count into a roll up, and Jay White gets the win, and he has six points in the tournament. And match was decent. I gave it three point two five out of five stars. Uh so that's pretty much it. So, uh, Jay Vito and Mark Briscoe are eliminated. People are saying, "Oh, they're the jobbers." Tony Khan picked the twelve best wrestlers in this tournament to be in this tournament. I should say. And you calling them jobbers? Just because they didn't get a point? Come on now. At least at least Wheeler Yuta wasn't in the tournament. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. As DDP would say. Let me move on. Alright, so current uh so at the end of week three in the gold league, Boxley and Swerve with nine points, two matches remaining. Next week they will face off, and then uh the week after that. Uh, December the 20th, the final week of the tournament, uh, Moxley will face off against Jay White, and I think Swerve will face Roosh. So, if Swerve, Swerve or Moxley lose next week, they have to have them uh, lose to set up a tie, and we'll see what happens with that. But, Jay White at 6 points, and Bruce still in the running. He has to win. He has to win out, basically. To maybe set up a three-way tie. And if Jay White wins his next two matches, he wins the tournament. Well, not the tournament. The gold league, I should say. So, Jay White has some... Some... You know, he needs, he needs two big wins and some help. So, it feels like the, feels like the playoffs, basically. But this is the nitty-gritty time of the G1. So, you get that. So, Roosh with three points, Jay Lethal and Mark Briscoe, like I said, eliminated, but they're still in the tournament to fight, to maybe play spoiler, and we'll get all that. So, everybody has two matches remaining. So, been a pretty good, pretty good uh, tournament. I, matches were great, especially the ones on Dynamite, uh, not, no, excuse me, Dynamite, uh, Collision, and then we're going to get a good match on Friday night, Brian Danielson and... Daniel Garcia, and then Brian Danielson, and Andrade, whoo, that's going to be good, even though both shows are taped, so most of you know the results already, I know the results already, well, sucks, but, you know, what are you going to do, that's that, alright, then we get a look at what's coming on Rampage and Collision, uh, and also next week on Dynamite with Winter is Coming. So we got week four of the Goldie of the, of the Continental Classic Tournament. Uh, so on Dynamite, we got Swerve versus Moxley. Um, I think Jay, Wright, Jay White versus Roosh. And I think Bris Mark Briscoe versus Jay Lethal. I think. I don't know. I, I, gotta, I only know that one match is Swerve and Moxley, which should be the main event. I hope it is, but we'll see. And then we're going to hear from Samoa Joe next week, and he's going to be pissed. 
of what happened tonight with Max with the beer bottle and the minions attacking him, the devil showing up. So, you didn't do your job there, Joe. You're supposed to protect Max for the AEW world title. But what did you fuck up? God forbid Max is now hurt and he's not going to be at the pay-per-view, which, but he still will. Even if he's like 10%, he'll still be there. Because it's Long Island. That's that. Alright, after that, we go to your main event of the evening for the TNT title. We have Chris Kidd! Comes up by himself. No Nukasaurus or Kill Switch. And the prodigy Nick Wayne, they're both still out after what Edge did last week. So, Edge comes out. Adam Copeland, Threshold, whatever you want to call him. Alright, so... This was a good match. Stupid ending. I think we all knew we were going to get a Montreal Screwjob 3. That's what we got. So, it's also with Edge. Fast and Furious knocking Christian to the apron for the... Dinky's Sheamus forms to the chest. Then he takes him to the announcer's table. It starts ramming him on the announcer's table. I mean, don't hit Tony Schiavone. I mean, you hit Taz. I don't care. <laughs> Taz is my boy now, but, you know. You could hit Excalibur. But I'll take Excalibur. Anyway, then he takes a, woo, energy drink. And he has a couple of them. Oh, by the way, we heard Taz open up one of them on um, during the Moxley Rouge Max match. If you were listening carefully, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear the, the, the can open. And Taz is drinking. <laughs> Somebody forgot to mute your mic. Hmm. So anyway. So yeah, Edge rams him into, into the table. The Wu energy drinks are flying all over the place. Probably spilling over the announcer's table. Yeah, but Ric Flair is paying for it. That's why he's paying, he's paying to be in AEW right now. Tony ain't paying him. Anyway, so, uh, so, Christian bails back into the, on the floor, Edge blocks the low blow, goes right after the hand, keeps Christian in trouble, but Christian manages a ramp into the ring post, ow, as we go to break, we come back, Christian starts hammering away with his left hand, not the right hand, in the corner, so Edge bites the right hand to escape, interesting. Then a middle rope Russian leg sweep. Nice. Takes Christian down. They go to the outside once again. And uh, this time, Christian sends Edge into the ring steps and hits a frog splash in the ring for a near fall. And then Christian goes for the spear, gets counted into the impaler for a near fall. But Christian comes right back with more left hands in a corner. And then Edge counters, in, counters into a Liger Bomb. Made famous by Jushin Thunder Liger. Hall of Famer, by the way. For a near fall. Uh, Christian gets right back up. And tries to go for kill switch. He gets counted into the edge matic for a 2.99999995. Then Edge locks in the Crippler Crossface. Oh, I meant Crossface. To keep Christian in trouble. But that gets broken up. Edge then starts hammering away. On Christian goes to the spear, gets counted into the kill switch. Nice counter for a very near fall. Then the referee was um, who was it? Um, Rick Knox gets 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 a shot in the eye. So ref bump. So Christian takes the opportunity, the pun intended, with you know the the uh, the. Uh, superstar opportunist, you know, kicks him in the nuts, grabs the belt, and goes for a belt shot. And it, or he misses the belt shot. Then they both try for spears. Then they collide in the in mid air, and then both down. And then Shana Wayne, that's Nick Wayne's mom, and she got it going on. She comes out. And we're all thinking, yep, here comes the screw job. So she grabs the title, 
And she kind of looks at a looks at Edge, looks at Christian. Back to Edge. Back to Christian. Edge starts getting up, and then Sh Shanna Wayne with the heinous act, boom, knocks Edge right in the fucking face with the title. And then, you know, Rick Knox is still out. So I'm like, oh, is, I guess we're gonna get a no contest here. No, obviously not. So Christian stands over Edge, holds up the belt. Then he t places the belt over over Edge's face and then stomps on it, that which didn't look good. And then he goes for the cover, wakes up with Knox, and then Knox goes one, two, three. Christian retains the TNT title in 18 minutes. And now Shauna Wayne is now, I guess, Shauna Wayne Cage. So now Nick Wayne, you know, has a stepfather now. That's Mr. Uh, Christian. And now Shauna has a, you know, a new guy. So all the time that Christian was mocking Nick Wayne's mom and Nick Wayne's dad. I don't want to follow this this evening. And everything, Shauna's like, after Shauna saw Edge basically spear Nick Wayne in half and then Give him the concerto right in front of her. You knew that she was going to do something. She was going to get revenge. And that's what happens. So that's it. So Christian gets the win. But we're going to run this back at World's End. We'll probably get something this weekend about it. Or possibly next Wednesday night on the program. At Winter is Coming. Where Edge probably will come out. It's like, it's like you didn't beat me. This and that. It's like, we're going to do this again in Long Island. Probably be some type of stipulation. Maybe a cage so nobody gets in and gets out. Like that's going to work. But I think Edge will win the title at World's End. I think we all knew that. We all knew that was going to happen when Edge made his debut at Wrestle Dream. So. We shall see what happens with that. And that's pretty much it. So, match was, was good. Bad ending. But I still gave it three and a half out of five stars. And that pretty much ends... This edition of Dynamite. And that's it. Alright, so my final rating for Dynamite. A solid 7 out of 10 stars. Wasn't a bad show, per se. But still, decent for what it's worth. And that's pretty much it. So we'll see what happens on Rampage and Collision this weekend. And we're only 2 weeks... Uh, actually, we're 3 weeks away from... From the final pay per view of the year for AEW. Worlds and in Long Island. So... Maybe more matches will be announced. Cause right now, we only got two matches. And that's Max for, Maxwell Jacob Fartknocker against Samoa Joe 3 for the AEW World title. And the finals of the Continental Classic Tournament. Probably be Swerve and Brian Danielson. But we'll see. That's going to be a banger. And uh, we'll see what else happens on the show. Probably get an AEW Tag Team title match. Ricky Starks and... And big cast might defend the defend the belts. Uh, we might get uh, FTR in the House of Black doing something. See what happens with that. Maybe you know, maybe maybe just maybe they'll they'll find Daddy Ass and the acclaimed. They'll defend the Trios Championships. We haven't seen them in a while. Ever since I think uh, I think the uh, sixty nine. 69 uh, segment on Collision, you know, day 69 of their title reign. But we haven't seen them in a while. I mean, what's going on here? So, probably get maybe something with that. Uh, definitely going to get Tony Stone defending against I don't know who. Uh, Julia Hart will probably face, uh, well, she's facing Abaddon this, uh, this week on Collision. I believe, and um, I, well, I don't know if that match was announced, but it probably will. It probably is going to happen. But anyway, uh, but Julia Hart will probably defend her TBS Championship. Uh, I don't know against who, but maybe Sky Blue at this point. I don't know, but but in any case, all the titles will be on the line: the World Title, the TNT, the TNT Title, definitely. So that's three three matches there. It wasn't announced yet, but it will be. So that's three. Three max official will be announced. Uh, then they have to space out the rest of the card and the pre-show. 
zero hour. So probably all in all, we're probably getting like twelve to maybe fourteen matches from World's End. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But knowing Tony Khan, we're pretty much three weeks away. And we only got really one match announced, but we're gonna get another one by the end of the month end of this month anyway. But in between, he's gotta start um thinking about the matches for that. I know he's got all the matches, for, uh, most of the matches for Final Battle almost done. Uh, we don't have a world title match, so Eddie's not defending, which is surprising. I know he's defending the belt in the tournament, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. We got the TV title tournament, the Survival of the Fittest tournament. Um, Dalton Castle's already in, in the tournament, uh, not the tournament, in the match. I forget who else. Um, but we got Keith Lee and and Shane Taylor in a big beefy men slapping meat match. That's gonna be fucking insane. Uh, Athena defending the women's title against Billy Starks. My prediction might come true, but we'll see. Um, and I don't know what's gonna happen with the Ring of Honor tag team belts that Max has. If Max, well, Max may may either. Vacate them or defend them and probably lose to the kingdom at this point. It has to be the kingdom at this point because that's the only other tag team I could think of that can win. Because they he already beat the um I think he already beat the righteous so so we got that so I think the kingdom would become the new Ring of Honor tag team champions. Uh, Wheeler Yuta is supposed to be in a few is having a few with Hook over the FTW title, but I don't know if he's gonna defend the pure title. At final battle. So we'll have to see tomorrow night on Ring of Honor. What's going on with that. And then next Thursday is the Go Home Show. Before next Friday's Ring of Honor final battle event. We're just going, he going pretty much head to head with SmackDown. Where Roman's going to be back. So that's forget it. And Rampage. So Rampage is going to get destroyed by Roman himself. Nobody's going to watch final battle. I mean, I'll watch it, not not the same time as SmackDown. I gotta I gotta watch SmackDown for the Tribal Chief, so I will watch uh, Final Battle probably next Saturday. Do that review on, on right here on this channel, and and then that's that. And we'll get ready for Sm uh, for for Collision that night. Uh, see what happens with that. Let me see what, hap what, hap what happens with that. So Tony Khan's really, right now, focusing on Final Battle, which is next Friday. Then he's going to start getting the matches ready for World's End. And that's pretty much it. For the for the year, for for AEW. And then we're going to start, start a new year. January the 3rd, Dynamite. Which, I, which is going to be from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. So get your tickets now. I'm not going. I would go, but I mean, it's, it's a hop, skip, and jump away from me. Just have to get on the train, go to the go to the Port Authority, get the get the New Jersey Transit train right to Newark, and um, I think I have to walk a few blocks to get to the Prudential Center because it's right near Newark Newark Penn Station. So there you go. It's like one stop off the New Jersey Transit train. Bing, bang, boom! I'm you know get there, get there, and I have to walk. Or take a take a cab, which probably won't be that much for the cab, I don't think. But in any case, and then get back. Maybe I'll maybe walk down to the train station, get on the train. I don't know when the last train is. I think it's like twelve, maybe one o'clock. So you got to get out of there quick. Get the train, take it back to Penn Station in Manhattan, and then right after that, get on the train going back to Brooklyn. And pretty much I'm home after that. If I ever if I went, but probably not gonna be going. I'll probably just watch it for free in my glorious house. And that's um that's that on the rich man's cable, and that's it. So we got that. So January third, dynamite in New Jersey at the Prudential Center, the Rock with those pesky well, not even pesky, they suck. The New Jersey Devils play. So there you go.
So go there. Everybody that lives in the northeast around my area, go, if you want to go, go. Have fun. And um, that's pretty much it. All right, so 7 out of 10 stars for Dynamite. And that's pretty much it. Uh, watch my other two videos down below in the comment in the comments in the uh, description box below, and that's pretty much it. So I'm out of here. I'm gonna I'm going to sleep. I have to get up in a couple in a few hours. I have a, a doctor's appointment to go do. I have a blood test to do tomorrow. Uh, but should go okay. I don't think anything is gonna happen. I feel I feel fine. I I'm not Johnson. I'm fine. No, you're not. <laughs> But, in any case, yeah, in any case, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I got to go for, the, I got to go to the doctor tomorrow, and I got to do some other things tomorrow. And maybe late tomorrow night, I will do my Ring of Honor review, right, uh, not right here on the channel, but on my Kill of Demons channel. And then Friday, 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 the weekend will start, uh, Friday, um, Hopefully, uh, before SmackDown, I'll I'll do my NXT Deadline uh, predictions on T, uh, TSL number 15. And then get you ready for SmackDown and Rampage. And then I will do SmackDown and Rampage Friday night. Late Friday night. Get those get that out of the way on the Kill Demons channel. And then Saturday, I would I will only do one video, and that is your NXT Deadline review. On this very channel. And then Sunday, 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 early Sunday, I will do my collision review right before the Niners game. That's a big game this weekend. I get to see Cox in Santa Clara. The Niners win. They basically win the division. And then Sunday Night Football, Eagles versus the Cowboys in Dallas. That's going to be a big, huge game. And pretty much, the if the Cowboys win, they'll be in first place in the NFC East. But, there's always a but and it smells. The Niners will get the number one seed per head-to-head -head because they beat the Eagles and the Cowboys this, this, this season. So, there you go. It'll be really nice. A real nice day. The Niners destroy the Seacocks. Destroy their... You know, put a real dent in their playoff hopes. Then you got to worry about the Rams in the playoffs because they're six and six. The 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 uh, the blue. What am I thinking? The uh, the Vikings and the Packers. You know, right now, right now, six and seven seed, kind of a toss up. Who's gonna win? And then the four seed. You know, the NFC South sucks right now. Uh, pretty much between uh, Atlanta, Tampa Bay, and, and the Saints. So whoever wins that div that division will probably get the number four seed, and then they'll face probably face the Cowboys or the Eagles. That'll suck. Because pretty much whoever faces the Niners is probably going to be between the Vikings, the Packers, the Rams. I mean. But the, the Niners will have the home game. Or if the Niners can somehow win out, which they can do. I mean, they got the, they got the Seacocks. Not an easy game this week. Then they got Arizona in pretty much uh, Levi Stadium South. That should be an easy win in Arizona. Nothing's ever easy. And then right after that, the Christmas night game in Santa Clara against the Ravens. That's going to be... Interesting, you know, me and Otaku gonna go to war that night. In fun though. Uh so hopefully the Niners can win that. Then they got the Commanders uh in Washington on New Year's Eve. So that and that's a one o'clock game, so probably won't be shown on TV, but who knows? Uh and then the final week of the season, week 18, uh either January 6th or 7th, they play at home. In Santa Clara against the Rams, which could be very interesting. You know, the Niners could really knock the Rams out of the playoffs, possibly. Or it could be a preview of the wild card round if the Niners get the number two seed or the three seed. So, 
We'll see. It's squeaky bum time. So, we'll see what happens with that in the next uh, the next uh, four weeks. Because this is week 14 in the NFL. In the league where they play. Full pay. And that's pretty much it. So, so football, you know, the season's winding down. And then we're going to talk about the playoffs. And then right around the corner is the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 58, or for you people that love Roman numerals, L-V-I-I-I. In Vegas. So we'll see what happens with that. So I'm hoping next home open Sunday is gonna be a good day. The Niners clinch the division. We're gonna have a party. After that, might do a video about it, but we'll see. And uh and after that, pretty much now it's just a matter of seating, and hopefully we can keep that number one spot or possibly keep possibly hold on to that number two slot. But we get the home game. In the first round, in the wild card round, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, whoever gets the number one seed between the Eagles, the Niners, or the Cowboys. So, one of those teams is going to get home field throughout. I hope it's the Niners. That'd be great. You know, the Niners are a great road team, too. So, showed it last year, but even though they lost to Philly in the NFC title game, which could possibly happen again. I hope not. I hope the Eagles. <clears throat> They choke, but if they get the number five seed and they play freaking Atlanta, ugh, that's an easy win. Tampa Bay, same thing. The Saints probably be the same. So I think the Eagles, if they get the number five seed, they'll easily win the wild card round. Possibly a date with the Niners in the NFC division round, but it's gonna be in Santa Clara most likely. That'll be great. Had the Eagles come in to Santa Clara and lose again. Smash, stacked, beaten down in the turf. That'd be great. Send them out of the playoffs. And then we go to the championship game. Against who? Maybe the Cowboys? We have to beat them again? But this time probably in Dallas? Mm. But that'd be a good game. Definite, definite night game. Gotta put that at night. Don't put that in the fucking day. Like they did last year. Oh, wait, no. I think it was... The, no, it was at night. Because it was a night game. Uh, anyway. But yeah. So, I think... I really think... If all goes well, we could see the Niners in the Super Bowl. Against who? The Chiefs don't look like champions this year. I mean, don't count them out. But they don't look like champions right now. They're the number... Number three seed, I believe now, but could be the could be the Ravens. You know that'll be really oh my gosh. Me and Otako in the Super Bowl yelling at each other. Not on vid, well, not on video, of course. You know, I talk, I'll talk to them behind the scenes, say, "Hey, good luck to your team." I'm not gonna make a bet with Otaku, but it is what it is. But. Hey, if he wins, I'll congratulate him like a man. Say, like, hey, Otaku, great, you know, great season. He's gonna go nuts. And then, you know, me and the, me and everybody, all the Niner fans are gonna have to once again deal with all the heartbreak again. Like many years ago, I think it was 2012 or 13, when the Ravens beat the beat the Niners and Kaepernick in the Super Bowl, even though the referees fucked that game up. And really, the Niners shouldn't have been down by a lot in the first half. But even though, even though, you know, watching that game with my brother from another mother, you remember that game, right? Yes, you do. I said, my brother was so destroyed. He's like, ah, this game's over. I'm like, dude, it's not over yet. They're going to come back. And what happens? They came back and almost won the goddamn Super Bowl. If it wasn't for that holding call on Crabtree. Now, I'm just saying... I'm just saying, the Niners should have won that Super Bowl, and my brother would have been freaking ecstatic. It would have been probably the greatest day in his life. But sadly, it wasn't. And then that was, you know, not his last Super Bowl with the Niners. I mean, we all know the last Super Bowl with the night that the Niners were in in 2020 when they lost and choked to the Chiefs thanks to the refs. And that was my brother from another mother's final Super Bowl because he. Pretty much a couple of days later, he sadly passed away. 
just shockingly passed away and then hurt 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 me and hurt him and hurt you know his family you know Rosen and his family and everything but sad it was almost four years later goddamn thinking about it now it's just gonna make me cry so I gotta stop so so we'll see what happens with that hopefully the Niners can get into the Super Bowl and win it'll be really great from not only me the Niners fans from my brother from another mother that'd be great Wish it was if, it, if they didn't win, I'll be like, I wish it was here. But it is what it is, and that's that. But we'll talk about football, you know, later on this weekend, and then no, that's it. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Seven out of ten stars for Dynamite. We'll see what happens uh, tomorrow on Ring of Honor and this weekend on SmackDown, Rampage, Collision, and NXT Deadline. So don't forget to hit that bell for all those videos coming your way this weekend. And that's pretty much it. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Peace out. Rock on and rock hard with your fucking coo And if you're not down with that, too fucking bad. That's just too fucking bad. Because me and a whole other bunch of people that are way better than you, and you know it. We got three words for you. Those mighty three words, my friends. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and until next time, goodbye, mwah, and good night. Bang! Peace!